Good morning everyone. It is Thursday morning the 25th of March and for our Lent readings this morning we're going to read together all of John chapter 14. Again another very well known portion of um, John's Gospel this morning. So let's read it together. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. There is more than enough room in my father's home. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know the way to where I am going. No, we don't know, Lord, Tom said. We have no idea where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and yet you still do not know who I am? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. So why are you asking me to show him to you? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of the work you have seen me do. I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it, so the Son of Man can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all the truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognise him. But you know him because he lives in you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but will you will see me. Since I live, you will also live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you, I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen so that when they do happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. Come, let's be going. Amen. The end of John 14. John 14 is a part of scripture which a lot of people will have heard and a lot of people will recognise, um, even people who don't go to church, because it's a passage that we quite often will use at a service of thanksgiving or a funeral service because of what Jesus says about his father's house. But I want to think about something else this morning. I want to think about the advocate. Jesus promises that whenever he goes, the father will send somebody else. He calls them the advocates. And then later on, um, down in verse 26, names him as the Holy Spirit, who is with them at this time because Jesus is with them. 
but after Jesus goes, the Holy Spirit will dwell in them. And that's the great promise of Jesus, that we are never alone. That whenever we say that God is with us, it's because whenever we trust Christ, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us, living in us, uh, reminding us and helping us and guiding us. Jesus says there that the Holy Spirit will teach the disciples of everything and remind them of everything that he has told them. And the Holy Spirit does the same for us. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand God's word, helps us to know what God wants us to do. And it's a matter of listening to that voice and obeying God. It's wonderful to think that we have part of God with us everywhere. And no matter where we go, God is dwelling in us and, and is around us and, and looking after us and protecting us. The Holy Spirit helps us as we pray. Whenever we don't have the words to use, the Holy Spirit interprets that for us to God. Whenever we just cry out, he hears us. And that's why Jesus talking to disciples can tell them that they have a peace that the world doesn't understand. He says, I leave you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. You know, that peace is the peace that reminds us that no matter what is going on in this world, God is ultimately in control. No matter, no matter what happens, we will be with God. And one day we will be reunited. One day all of this will end, all this suffering. And we will have perfect healing, perfect peace perfect harmony with God. It's just an amazing promise at a time whenever Jesus is about to go and face the cross that he talks about peace, that he talks about God dwelling with us, that he wants to remind his disciples that no matter what happens, I am with you. And it's the same for us today. No matter what happens, God is with us. No matter what happens today, God is with us. Never what happens the rest of this year, God is with us in every circumstance. We are never alone. You know, in this pandemic, it's easy to feel lonely, isn't it? With this pandemic, it's been really easy that even though there's maybe people around, maybe you're, you're doing like this and you're on the screen, to still feel lonely and to still feel isolated. Well, in that isolation, God is with you. In that loneliness, you are not alone because our Heavenly Father is always with us. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you are always with us. Thank you for your promise I will never leave you or abandon you. Father, thank you for the promise as well that you hold us by the right hand. Lord, there's so many promises in your word about how you're always with us. And here in this passage, Jesus tells us how, through your Holy Spirit. Father, thank you that you have given us your Holy Spirit. Thank you that we are never alone. Just help us each and every day, Father, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Thanks, folks, for joining in. If you're watching this this morning and you're coming down to the drop-off day, it'd be great to see you. Please remember your face mask if you can wear one. Please remember to keep your distance and stay safe. Uh, but in the meantime, to everyone, take care and God bless.